All right, I guess where this video starts, we'll call it thermal energy, and this will be part two for this video. Well, we've already went through what the equation looks like, and we went through some definition and some minor things. Let's take it a step farther. Let's actually look at the equation that we're going to be using. So our primary equation is, and we just listed a second ago, it is Q equals MC delta T. And of course, we can rewrite this as MC TF minus TI if we need to rewrite it in that fashion. So this really equation-wise is the only thing new. So what will this chapter do? This is a pretty easy looking chapter. So what's it going to try and do to make things harder? It's going to uh, pay the units. They're going to try and mess up your units in the problem. It might try and give you like temperatures in Fahrenheit or Kelvin. Well, your temperatures need to be in Celsius. So for this chapter. So just pay attention for little things like that in the problems. Two, they're going to try and mix and match this. And what I mean by mix and match, I'll go and tell you a very common problem will be it'll have something to do with power. So you'll read a problem, they'll say something about megawatts or watts. Well, you got to remember, power is equal to work over time. That is true. But the better definition for power is energy over time. Well, what is Q? Q is thermal energy. That means if you've got a power problem, we can write Q over T. So don't be surprised at all if you end up working a problem and you end up saying power equals MC delta T over time, and that to be your problem. So this is very, 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 very common thing to do. So anyway, don't be surprised if you do that. Other things. Remember, Q is an energy. Well, that means any other problem that's energy could be set equal to Q, which means drop an object off a rooftop. It hits the ground and it gets warm. Well, that's because energy is not created or destroyed. What kind of energy is this object, something that's falling? Well, that's an MGY. So we could set MGY equal to MC delta T. We can make potential energy equal to heat. And that's all we're doing in this. What about, oh, the bullet question. Things do this all the time. A bullet is shot into something, and it absorbs it. You know, if you shoot a bullet into an object, that bullet's going to get warm. What kind of energy does the bullet have? Well, the bullet's got a one-half mv squared. It's got a kinetic. Well, in that case, we can take that and set it equal to mc delta t. So the moral of the story is any equation, now I'm going to give you one little hint. If you do any of this kind of stuff, if you do any of this mix and matching kind of stuff, and this goes for either of these situations, make sure you do everything in joules and in kilograms. You cannot use calories or grams or any of that stuff in these situations. Everything's got, because remember, Everything else in physics is joules and kilograms, which means you cannot use calories. The only time you get to use calories is if the only thing in the problem is just MC delta T, and that's the end of the problem. Other than that, I know you want to use calories because you love the fact that water is like a one, but no, we can't go there. Uh, any other equation, though, you've got, good grief, Einstein, we could throw MC square which is a completely different C than this C. That would be speed of light square. But still, energy is energy. We could set those equal to each other. Oh, good grief. Thank you, Max Planck. HF equals MC delta T. Ooh, the equation for a spring, 1 half KX square equals MC delta T. Moral of the story, any equation. Oh, work. Force times distance. Anything that's energy, you can set equal to mc delta t. And you'll see it in these examples. Now, the only other thing I think you could see that might be different, it's in my first example. I think it's kind of a dumb example problem. But then again, I didn't write the survey textbook. Nothing personal there, Mr. Survey, Raymond Survey. But anyway, I don't really care for this problem that much. 
It says a student eats a dinner rated at 2,000 food calories. He wishes to, basically what it's saying, here, you can pause it and read it. All right, are you done? Basically what it's saying is somebody goes and they eat a dinner. So they eat a dinner, and this dinner contains 2,000 food calories. So the only question you should be asking is, what's a food calorie? Well, a food calorie is not a physics calorie. A food calorie is what you see on the back of a label of something. I was going to look and see if I could see something on here right now. Ah, for example, here's a Nutrigrain bar I had this morning. Rip it open, look in the back, and calories. If you read the calories, which you're not, because it's too small on my wrapper, but I had 120 calories. That's 120 food calories on this. Well, this person ate 2,000, which was a heck of a meal, I must say. 2,000 food calories. A food calorie is a food calorie is a thousand actual calories. So, if you ate one food calorie, that would be a thousand physics calories, which means this person ate two thousand calories worth of energy, at least in terms of physics. Wow, it make you want to eat a lot less if you just realize you ate a two million calorie meal. But anyway, that's where we've got on this. So we've got two million calories. So now this person's going to want to go to a gym and they've got dumbbells. So here's my dumbbell. I'm going to get buff. And it says that it has a mass of 50 kilograms. And this person's going to, let's get them in here. Here's my person. And they're going to be picking this weight up. Give them a big smiley face. They're burning off their weight. They're going to be picking this weight up and putting it over their head. And it says that they can lift it two meters. Just out of curiosity, what kind of energy is this? Putting something up into the air like this. Well, it's an MGY. So we've got a potential energy. I can found I can figure out how much energy it takes to lift that weight. It said it was 50 kilograms. So 50 times 9.8 times 2. Oh, I should be able to do this in my head. 490. Am I right about this? Let's see here. Uh, 50 times 19.6. 980. Wow, my math was terrible. I got exactly half of oh. Yeah, I forgot about the two. So the answer is 980 on this question. So with every single lift, this person can burn 980 joules. Well, that doesn't help me because this is in calories. Well, still no big deal. Draw my line, put my X, draw my line. You see I happen to know a conversion factor. There are for every one calorie, there's 4.186 joules. Look kind of familiar there, this 4.86. So 2 million, I'm going to go 2 times 10 to 6, times 4.186. Oh, my goodness. I've got to burn 8372000. What is this? Oh, my goodness. I've got to burn off 8 million joules of energy from eating that dinner. Lifting that weight will only burn 980 joules at a time. Therefore, if we take a look at this, 8372, 3, divided by 9. How many times am I going to have to lift that weight to burn off that meal? Well... Looks like it's going to take 8,543 reps of lifting that weight. Uh, I'm going to give you a hint. Maybe you ought to go with the, uh, I don't know, the light menu tonight. I hope this also lets you know that, you know, burning off food calories can actually be quite an ordeal. So if you find it harder to lose weight than you think, hopefully now you understand the physics of it all. Your 2,000 food calories is really, check this out, 2 million physics calories or 8 million joules, which picking up that weight is not going to be a very effective way of burning off the weight. But anyway, 
Oh, well, I'm just curious. I wonder how many reps a minute you could do. Of, yeah, I don't think this is a good idea. Let's do one more problem. It's a problem about a cowboy. And this old cowboy is going to be shooting his pistol. Let's see if we can get this down. Cowboy shoots a bullet, two grams silver bullet. Now, I'm going to write AG because this was silver. And it's two grams. So he's got a two gram silver bullet in there if you want to read the question. And you should be done. A two gram silver bullet, and he shoots it. And it's going 200 meters per second. And he shoots this into a wall, and it gets absorbed by the wall. So now the question is really just asking in here what is the temperature? Now, notice the way it asks this it says the temperature change of the bullet. Well, we had this talk a long time ago. When the question just asks you to find change, it's just looking for delta T, not TF, not TI. It's just looking for a delta T. So all I'm going to do is ask you one question. What kind of energy does this have, a bullet flying through the air? Well, that bullet flying through the air has just got a kinetic energy. And so that bullet is going into a wall, and all this kinetic energy is being turned into heat. Well, the equation for heat is mc delta t. And I'm done. The physics is done with this problem. If we go and try and work it, our masses both cancel out. Uh, let's take a look at something. It gave us velocity. Now, why did it tell us silver? Now, there's a reason why it gave us silver. And I hope I've got this piece of paper handy. The fact that this is silver tells me it's specific heat. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Silver is either, it says that silver is 234, and that's in joules and kilograms, or silver is 056, and that's in calories and grams. Which number do I need to use? Well, if you remember, I told you before in an earlier video, earlier in this video, I said, if you're going to do any of this mix and matching stuff, you got to be joules, you got to be kilograms. So when I go to do this problem, I'm going to use 234. And by the way, I'm done. I'm plugging the numbers. One half times the speed of the bullet was 200. Square equals C was 234 for silver. Remember, every material has its own unique specific heat and I'm looking for delta T so let's just go ahead and plug this in a calculator a half times 200 square divided by 234 and I've got 85.5 now just out of curiosity I saw for a delta T so my unit should be Celsius degree it's just a very minor thing but anyway I like making sure we got all the details so my answer is 85.5. And this is literally most of the first questions in the chapter start out this way. They're either going to be just a basic question where it like this, Q equals MC delta T. The question may very well give you Q, give you M, C, and ask for delta T, or give you mass and C. I think so far the only one I've heard questions from homework-wise in this chapter Matter of fact, I think the only question I've even had anybody ask so far, I'm looking for a sheet of paper I can actually write on. Here, just grab this for scratch paper. There's a question. Q equals MC, and it's a TF minus TI question. In other words, it didn't give you a delta T. It actually gave a temperature. The question gave a Q. is like 200. It gave you a mass. Let's go with a mass of 2. Let's use C of 1. Pretend maybe this is water. And at this point, this shouldn't be a question. It gave you an initial temperature. Let's say the initial temperature is 20. Just make sure you know you've got to distribute this to get your answer. So this would be 2 times TF. So 2TF minus 40, 200. And finish solving this, 240, 2TF. So 120. That's the only thing somebody messed up so far that I've seen is just forgetting that. So anyway, uh, enjoy.